They say that the safest place in the world to have a heart attack is Belfast, when research showed that more than half the people who had coronaries died before they could get to hospital, doctors here decided to take the hospital to the patient. Now, if you're struck down by a coronary in Belfast, you can have the best heart specialist with the newest equipment at your side within minutes. These men can be said to be living proof of the argument. A few days ago, they were on the brink of becoming victims of the biggest single killer of middle-aged man, the heart attack. They're convalescing after treatment in the hospital's intensive care unit that's already saved an average of 80 lives a year. Dr. Frank Pantridge, physician in charge, had the idea for the cardiac ambulance when it was revealed that 60 out of 100 patients with heart attacks died within the first hour of the onset of symptoms and one in four of those taken to hospital died on the way there. He knew that the delay in getting any patient into hospital under normal circumstances totaled 12 hours, so coronary victims were coming under intensive care when the greatest risk had already passed. This patient had two heart attacks in seven months and he's only 30. The ambulance saved his life both times and now he says he's not afraid of a third attack because he knows the ropes. Naturally, he considers the cardiac ambulance the greatest machine ever invented. Do we have chest x -ray? Yes. Mm -hmm. Man Alive spent a week with the cardiac ambulance and in that time went out with them on 10 emergency day calls. The fast departures leave time for only the flimsiest details of the suspected heart attack victims and only four of the 10 cases proved to be coronaries. 11 a.m. on Monday. We know that this is a patient, this patient is known to have heart trouble because he's been in the hospital before. Now, today he came home from work, suddenly took a very severe pain in his chest, unlike the, the mild pains that he sometimes does get from day to day, and became very pale and shocked and virtually collapsed. 2 p.m. the same day. This man is, a, is 58 years of age. He's developed central chest pain this morning. His wife has asked for our assistance. Tuesday, 10.30 a.m. Well, we know it's a 57-year-old man who has had a history of mild chest pain in the past, but who now has suffered severe chest pain. Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. A 73-year-old a man has collapsed suddenly in the street, and there is someone doing external cardiac massage and artificial respiration. 4.30, the same day. We only know that the patient has a, a presumptive heart attack and has become very critically ill. With, uh, the patient has been described as in a collapsed state. And the results? First case, false alarm, breathing problems. Two patients were dead before the ambulance arrived. Severe pains in the chest, but not a heart attack. False alarm, the patient had a perforated ulcer. Another false alarm, the patient fainted after an illness. Four of the patients had genuine heart attacks. Our final call, Sunday tea time and a heart attack in the suburbs. Well, speed is the all important uh, thing in this kind of case, because the longer we leave someone outside hospital with a coronary thrombosis, uh, the more likely they are to develop within the early hours of the onset of symptoms, irregularities of the heart rhythm. Uh, which can cause instant death. But what is it that you're taking to him? I mean, how does uh, the, what you've got in this ambulance compare with the sort of treatment he could get in hospital, sir? All the equipment that is carried in this ambulance is similar to what he would be having in hospital, be available to him in hospital. You can see it is arranged around the ambulance here and it's entirely portable. It can be taken into the patient's own home or wherever they have collapsed. So you're really taking the hospital to the patient in this case? That is so. A portable electrocardiograph connected to the patient gives two records of his heartbeat, a permanent one on paper, a visual one on a tiny screen. Just move your arm over. 
To find out which part of the heart muscle has been damaged, wires are later attached to the chest, which must be carefully prepared with electrode jelly before a true reading can be taken. Constantly, a watch must be kept on the heartbeat, which might suddenly change from fast to slow, and worst of all, to stop. In the ambulance on the way to hospital, the constant watch over the heartbeat is maintained, and if the need arises, if the heart stops beating, there's even equipment to give electric shock treatment in an emergency roadside stop. I'm bringing in a 68-year-old male with an acute coronary thrombosis. I require a cubicle for his continuing monitoring. He will probably be in the cubicle about 48 hours, uh, depending on what his uh, condition is and what his heart rhythm is. If there's any disturbance in his rhythm, he might need uh, monitoring for longer, but the average period is about 24, 48 hours. Why over the two days? Uh, mostly because this is the, the main uh, interval where any complications may occur. It's not, uh, they can occur outside the 48 hours, but the most likely period is in the first 48 hours after the coronary thrombosis. Today, he's fit and well and able to lead a normal life again. His heart attack wasn't the end, but a fresh start. <laughs>